It has now been four weeks since Magna's 5.7 magnitude earthquake. And just last night, people in the Salt Lake Valley, uh, Tooele County, Davis County felt another large aftershock. We have Dr. Keith Coper from the University of Utah Seismology Department joining us now to tell us more about this. Dr. Coper, thanks for being with us. Yeah, good morning. So I think the big question is, this apparently was the largest aftershock we've had since that initial earthquake. So is there any significance to that since it's been a month? It seems odd. Yeah, it, it, you know, it is a little bit unusual for a bigger aftershock like this to occur, you know, so far after the, uh, the main shock. But, uh, but it's not sort of unusual in the sense that it would cause alarm or anything like that or change any of our forecasts. So it is within sort of the normal parameters um, and it is definitely an aftershock. Uh, so even though we're about a month out, uh, it, it's still possible to have these, you know, relatively moderate sized events that are widely felt. So for people who are just kind of coming to grips with the fact that the earth shakes a lot in Utah, what is the difference between a, a foreshock, a main shock and an aftershock? Yeah, it's just the uh, it's just the timing. So basically, the main shock is going to be the biggest earthquake that happens in the whole sequence. And if there are a couple of smaller earthquakes that happen in front of it, then we would just call them a foreshock. And all the all the earthquakes that happen after it are just called aftershocks. So whether we say main shock, foreshock, aftershock, we're all you know we're always talking about earthquakes. Is there, Dr. Cooper, is there any way to predict to let people know one's coming? Time and date, Time and date. magnitude, <laughs> all those things Please? we want to know. Well, if I knew, I would let you know for sure. Um, we, we don't have that ability. I always tell people that, you know, if you think the weather is, is bad at forecasting, we're worse than the, than the weather <laughs> forecast. So uh, we do make these probabilistic sort of forecasts, you know, estimates about when and how big something can happen. But we just don't have the capability uh, to say, you know, next Tuesday at 10 a.m. there's going to be a magnitude 3. Uh, it's just not possible to do that. So we're looking at all the seismic activity. We just pulled up a graph with all the seismic activity between March 18th and April 13th. And it really looks like a cluster there. Are these things becoming, earthquakes in general, are they becoming more common? Um, they're not. It's actually natural for them to cluster in sort of time and, and space. And... Uh, you know, there's no evidence that there's a sort of a systematic increase in the number of earthquakes. A lot of people asked about this after the big earthquake in Idaho that happened around April 1st. Um, and, and that was basically unrelated to, to our earthquakes. So, uh, so there's really no evidence for sort of an increase or for anything for, for, you know, people to be worried about. Real quickly before we let you go, just because last night's aftershock was so sizable, should we expect more aftershocks? It, it wouldn't be surprising if there were a few magnitude twos or threes that are basically aftershocks of this aftershock that happened last night. So there can be sort of a cascade of smaller events that sort of pile on, but we don't expect increased risk for a big damaging earthquake. So that risk of like a magnitude six or seven, it's just the same as it was uh, before this earthquake. So nothing has changed in that respect. Okay, an aftershock of the aftershocks. <laughs> We're coming to We're grips coming with to it. Grips. Dr. Keith Coper from the University of Utah Seismology Department. Thanks a lot.